Thank you, Father, for who you are, what you do. God, I pray that we will understand how to be with you, how to do with you. Thank you for the honor, the honor, the privilege. And by your grace, we do not just accept our assignment. We're not just going to believe your blueprint through the Holy Spirit. We will commit by your grace to communicate, to stay in this awesome conversation with you, that you died and you gave everything so that we can have this eternal relationship of sharing lives, sharing hearts in the beauty of words that has eternal value. But God, in all of that, when we look at ourselves, we see so much flesh. We see so many challenges and things that we need to get out of our lives and, and to get over. Help us by your grace. But when we look at your word, God, we see that only, only through the cross of Christ we can have a destiny. Only through denying ourselves. Only through the blood of Christ. We can have boldness to the throne of grace. And I pray that we will understand that where the message of the cross is the power of God unto salvation and only the message of the cross. Therefore, we will boast in nothing else except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And all say, amen, amen. You can write there the next heading, die against destruction. You can write it down, die against destruction. Destruction. What are we talking about? The work that you are busy with, guys, can destroy your life. The work even that God has given you can be such a destructive, destructive force in your life. You can work yourself into death. And work can be such a curse from hell. If you don't understand work as worship, or work as a curse. You do it with God. You do it for God. Then work will be expression of worship. But you don't do it with God and do it for God. Then work will be a curse. If there's not a middle way. There's not a middle way. That work's going to be a curse. Uh, that work will produce certain, certain finances, certain means. And that, that finance... That finance will become a curse in your life or in your children or in your grandchildren. It will be a curse because how God's hand is not in that. Because only what you do as if unto the Lord and with the Lord has eternal value, has the blessing of God, has the hand of God on that work and the fruit of that work. You are here? Okay, let's go. Romans 8, 13. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. You must die. It's destructive death. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body. Let's say, I will put to death the deeds of the body. So there's some deeds, there's some work. Your body is going to work in the flesh. Your body is not going to be lazy to work this, uh, with a destructive force in your life. But you must actively make sure, I put to death the deeds of the body. I put to death the deeds of the body. And there's only one place, through the cross. The death of my flesh works through repentance at the cross of Christ. Everybody say repentance. Repentance at the cross of Christ. But as long as you, some guys when they hear the word, there's, if you hear the word of God and there's a lot of justifications in your heart, just know that's demonic speaking. That's the demonic speaking. But if you, were, if you hear the word of God under the guidance of the Spirit, there's a brokenness that will come in you. There's an openness that will come in you. There's a gentleness that will come in you. There's a softness. There's a teachable spirit, the teachableness that will come in you. Hello? If you hear the word under the guidance of the spirit. But if you hear the word and your mind is suddenly so busy with other stuff or there's justification or you cannot keep the focus, go. Let somebody pray for you that you are set free. There's only one spirit supposed to be in you. That's the spirit of God. Amen. Let us then, let us then press on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of 
repentance from dead works. Hebrews 6 verse 1. So you must put to death. Put to death. That's the next verse. Hey, hello. You must put to death this deeds from the flesh. But the first foundation, when you grow in maturity, Paul said, when you must... When we want to grow into maturity, must I really lay the, f- the first foundations again? And the first of the first foundations, the six foundations for the church, is repentance from dead works. Repentance from dead works. There's good works that God has prepared for us in advance for us to walk in it, to give him glory. And there's dead works as a basic foundation in your life that you need to repent of. Dead works, dead works. That's good intentions. Many times it's good intentions. It's trying your best, giving yourself. But there's death in the work that you do. You do it with a sincere heart. You say, because I love God, I dedicate my my work, my business unto the Lord, the, the, the place where I work. Yes, you work there and you want to make a difference there at school or university or where you are. We are working. And you say, I, I give it to you, Lord. I give Lufontaine to you. There are places, the people that I, that I connect with. And then, after you gave it to the Lord, what happens? If you really gave it to God, you will stay there with God and say, now, if it now belongs to you, Bluefontaine belongs to you, what do you want to do with Bluefontaine? It's not just giving it to the Lord and walk away. It's not giving your business to the Lord and then walk away. Then it is there and see how certain things must die in your strategies, in your ambitions, in your ideas, in your good ideas. This must stop. That must stop. That was good, but it's not from me. That is good in the future, but it's going to destroy and be a curse in your life if you do it now. God is a practical God. But you must make sure all this practicality of the flesh and the rubbish in our lives must stand aside, must die, and that's only through the cross. Only through the cross. How can you repent from dead works? How can you bring to death the deeds of the body? Only through the cross. Matthew 16, 24. If anyone desires to be my disciple, if you want to come under the pattern of Christ's walk, if you want to walk the way he walks, talk the way he talks, have a life that is from him, let him deny himself that is disregard. Lose sight of and forget himself. Lose sight of. Forget about looking at yourself. Just Hello? Forget himself and his own interests and take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross has to do with take up his identity. Take up his cross has to do with the old rubbish life. The putting to death is through the cross. I'm crucified with Christ, but I want to know Christ crucified and the risen Christ. The life of Christ that is in me. I'm going to live with that life. But then I need to crucify all those other rubbish. Amen. Are you still here? Deny yourself through the work of the cross. But don't destroy yourself in your own works. You will deny yourself or you will destroy yourself. These guys in performance, in the work, in the work that you do, you're going to destroy yourself. You're going to destroy yourself with your work if you find security in your work, if you are focusing on your work more than focusing on God in your work. Your work will be faithful to destroy yourself. Your work and what demons can work through your work will not be so stupid. They will be clever. They will have strategy to destroy you. Finish. Even in relationship with God when it's religion when it's not I accept my assignment with respect I take your word Lord and because I will overcome through your word I stay in conversation and intimate relationship with you if I don't take that principles that basic principles when I come into this place I will destroy myself and because I'm not in conversation with him go and slaughter your son Abram if you love me go and kill your son But Abram stayed in conversation with God. So at that moment, if he was in religion, if he was in performance, he would not have heard a voice saying, Stop, Abram, now I know that you love me. 
God never intended for his son to be slaughtered. Are you with me? But he need to hands off, hands off, hands off. Because it's God's promise. Hands off. Isaac does not first belong to me. It belongs first to him. Isaac is first the son of God before he's the son of Abram. And Isaac needs to be surrendered in worship. We are going up the mountain to kill my son. No, we're going up the mountain to worship, to surrender everything and everyone to the Lord. Because Isaac belongs to the Lord. My heart belongs to God. My, my existence belongs to God. Everything is unto the Lord. Are you here? Therefore, he can be the father of the nations. God can trust him with the biggest vision for a man on earth except Christ. Abram. Because in worship, he surrendered the essence of the promise of what God has given him. May God help you. May God help me. Amen. So, my brother, my sister, if we see this, all this stuff, and we need to know, we need to deal with it. And the works, the message, we talked about that already. The message of the cross is foolishness. It's absurd. The Bible says, the cross, the message of the cross in your life, it's absurd, man. It's illogical. Everybody say illogical. Absurd. If you never came into places, into situations where Holy Spirit will tell you to do something absurd, something to do illogical, uh, my question is, how deep are you walking with Christ? Because if you really walk with Christ, God's going to challenge you about some stuff. It will not just be cruising through the waters. God will send the storm where you must use his name and through his name take authority over the storm. But if you don't get it right, by God's mercy, he will get into the boat and do it for you. But he's not the first original plan. The original plan is that you will stand in the name of Christ against the storm. Amen. You with me? Okay, next one. Hebrews 9, verse 14. By miracle, we're going to go fast. Hallelujah. How much more will the blood of Christ do what? Cleanse your conscience from? Everybody? The scripture is not there. Cleanse your conscience from? Dead works. Once again, we're talking about this dead works. Can Take through your conscience, put you down, put you down, put you down. That you don't have, don't have this boldness before the throne of God. You don't understand that through the blood of Christ, the enemy has nothing on you. That Satanist priest that I prayed for, and the next morning he said, he saw that medium, he saw the demonic force that he had this intimate relationship with, uh, relationship with as a Satanist priest. He saw him around his bed, but, and he was looking at, but, that thing could not come closer. And immediately I just felt, I said, it's the blood of Christ over your life. But just from Satan's priest the next morning, that devil cannot come close. Yesterday you were my friend. Today I cannot come close to you. Even though he had fear, even through, though he had fear and he's not in the right place, he doesn't even know what the gospel is all about. Nothing. But through the mercy of God, you are protected by the blood. If you can respect the blood, if you can surrender yourself to him. Amen. How much more? I was talking about the blood in the Old Testament with all, all the slaughtering of animals. Brought forgiveness. But it was all pointing to one, to one, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. How much more? Well, the blood of Christ, the Lamb. Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. I always say, if somebody is struggling with forgiving themselves, I say, choose to say, I respect the blood more than I will respect my mistake. And if you say you will respect the blood of Christ more than the mistake of sleeping with a lady, not respecting her as the bride of Christ, but you used her for yourself as some other object for your lust. Through the blood of Christ, there's forgiveness. There's forgiveness. And tomorrow is a new day. Amen. Through the blood, you get out of the dead works. And you get into the good works. Because through the blood, tomorrow is an opportunity for the good works that God has prepared for you to do. With him and for him. Amen. No condemnation. No fear. No doubt. Can hold you back. No shame or guilt about good ideas and things exposed as networks can take you away. 
but in the light of what he has for you, go full out. There we have uh, Ephesians 5, 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather the reprove them. Uh, have no fellowship with the works. You can have, okay, I can have relationship with my work. You can have fellowship with your work. You can have fellowship with the works of darkness of sitting around here and not even focusing. Because it's some other spirit telling you to wara wara when you hear the word of God. When you sit tonight and you need to pray. When Hello. My work is keeping me busy. That's not something wrong to say. As long as you know God is also there in the busyness of your work. But if God is not there in the busyness of your work, you are working with your work, you are communicating with your work, you are walking with your work, you're not walking with God. Walking with your work, walking with your challenges, and not first of all walking with God. You have fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. But when you walk with God into your challenges, into your situations that you must face, into the business, into whatever you need to go tomorrow, my brother, my sister, then you walk with the light, we walk with the light, and him, the light of the world, will share some light in the meeting, share some light in the intimidation, share some light when you need to fire that guy, it will share some light when you must look at your finances. He will share some light. But if you have fellowship and you walk with the unfruitful works of darkness, maybe you are fed up, maybe you're frustrated, maybe you're negative, maybe you feel, I cannot go any longer. But ask God, is it because I need to learn how to worship you in spite of, or is it because I have fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness and I need to get out of this walking with the rubbish, walking with the challenge, walking because I'm taking responsibility for my life. That's not responsibility. Responsibility, you have one responsibility and that is that you will now go nowhere without Christ. You are walking with Christ into your situation. That's your responsibility through the grace of God and the guidance of the Spirit. That's in you. City bank is not lekker. Praise the Lord. Only for today, next week. Chapel. Okay. We're going for a near landing. There's a scripture that says, Romans 6, 13. Very short one. Present yourselves to God as being, everybody say, alive. From the dead. Present yourself to be alive from the dead. Some people think they, they, they were born and they are alive. No, they are dead. And they stay in death and they will go to eternal death to burn forever in hell. But you must understand your aliveness. Whew. You being alive and you present yourself to be alive is because you know I come from death. And that bring God's grace and, and gratitude on your life and thankfulness because you know where I come from. I come from a place of darkness where Adam, Eve, and all humanity messed up. But God has, 1 Peter, God has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I've been crucified with Christ. I died with Christ. I was buried with Christ. I was raised with Christ, raised with Christ. And I'm here. And me being alive is a testimony because Christ was, has risen from the dead. The life, how you present yourself before Christ is with a resurrected life that is in you. Don't present yourself for a life tomorrow like millions and billions of people. Tomorrow to be alive, to do what you need to do if it's not alive in Christ and with Christ, the resurrected Christ through your life. Because Galatians 2.20, you declare that I'm crucified. Everybody? Ah, just to stay alive. I'm crucified. With Christ, and it is no longer I who live. Yeah. He is a spook. You are a spook. What is a spook? Ghost. You are, you are just a ghost. Because you're not alive. You're some dead thing uh, floating around here. 
Because you're not alive. It's Christ living. No, no, no. It's a declaration of your mentality, of how you position yourself before God to be alive. I position myself, my flesh, my rubbish, my good ideas, my intentions, all. I present myself to be dead on the cross with Christ. And I present myself in such a way to be alive before God and people as as the people will say, Christ is alive. They look at your life. They look at your counsel. They look at your words. They look at your strategy. They look at what you do. And they say, Christ is alive in that man. Christ is living through that man. Oh, we need to get there. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. People are going to recognize the Christ in you. And the more, you know, the more darkness going to be, I don't want to say vomited out, but the fullness of hell going to be exposed on earth. It's going to happen. Dus soos, uh, wat sê jy nie, oh, ek gaan nie, het is draai nie, a pit sweer wat, oop bars, a uh, uh, boil that, pops, <laughs> burst open. <laughs> now, that thing, my brother, my sister, that's going to happen with what is coming from hell. Hell is going to, but you know, in that time, it's the moment when the light will shine so much bright. Because when there's the fullness of darkness, there will be the amazingness of light shining forth in the nations. And it will be through you, 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 that deal today with a, that must be dealt with. Let it heal. Open it up. Let it heal. That stuff. Amen. Oh, We're going for the last verse. First of all, I'm saying, you will need to write down, death on the cross will protect you against destruction from dead works. Death on the cross will protect you against destruction through dead works. Destruction through dead works. Death on the cross will protect you against the destructive force of death, dead works, flesh that will bring death in you, all that we said. Matthew 7, 22, 23. Many will say, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Oh, we were accurate. Have we not driven out demons in your name? Oh, we were powerful. And have we not done many mighty works? Many mighty works in what? In your name. In your name. And then I will say to them openly, publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. Wow, because you acted wickedly. How, how, how am I wicked? How, why I will be wicked if I, want, if I do what I do and in your name? I, I do my business in Jesus' name. I do my relationship. I do my destiny in Jesus' name. I do my strategy in Jesus' name. If you have not heard the commands of God, what is the good works that God has prepared for you in advance? If you don't take the blueprint and hear from God, what is the command for tomorrow? What is God's command to you tomorrow? One hour with me to enjoy me. Half an hour in the garden. Sitting with me. Phoning three people. Encouraging five. Write down who you are in, in me. Write five points about who is my, what is my father's heart for your life. Hello. Be patient in meetings. Be careful with a decision. Step out in faith with two decisions. Embrace the people. Receive them as you would receive me. See those in need. That is commandments that God to, will give you for tomorrow. But depart from me. Depart, depart from me. I don't know you. It has to do also with, I don't recognize myself in your works. In that, what did you say? Many, many mighty works. Many mighty works in Jesus' name. I am not found in your many mighty works. I'm not found there. I'm not the center of that many mighty works that you've done in my name, but I'm not there. You didn't do it with me. You didn't do it for me. It has no eternal value. It will be burned away. You could be saved as through fire. 
the worst is. But what you've done will be burned away. Now, my brother, my sister, by God's grace, if you and I could allow God to say that tomorrow to you, I don't know you when you do that. I don't know you when you follow that strategy. I don't know you because that's not who I made you to be. Whoever saw somebody and then one year later you see him and you say, I don't know that guy. What happened to that guy? Because he's now so full of bitterness and anger and, and rejection or pointing the finger or judging others. What happened to that guy? God says, I don't know you. This is not who I created you to be. This is not who I dreamt of you, who you could be with me. But then hear from God. God, what is the Cornelius? What is the Peter? What is the John? What is the Richard? That you say, I don't know that man. Because I didn't create him to be that man. And let us repent from dead works. Let us repent. By the grace of God, you have opportunity now as you sit here. You have opportunity tomorrow to walk in a different lifestyle. Into the good works that he has prepared for you long in advance. So that he can find delight in it. And do what is for you to do what is right in his sight. You see what he sees. You don't just see commandments. You don't just see works. But you can see what he is seeing. God, come and help us. God, thank you for the awesome privilege that you give us, Lord. To work the works that you have prepared for us, Lord. To work the works of God that we can work with you, work for you, Lord. God, I pray for every man and woman in this place that right now, right now in repentance at the cross of Christ, they will see themselves laying down that stress, that, that half-heartedness, that boredom when they hear the word of God. But God, I pray that we will have an excitement in us when we hear your word, when we walk with you, when we can focus on you. Help us to see, Holy Spirit, and expose to us the dead works in our lives that we will not have fellowship with works of darkness without even realizing his work of darkness. Every work where you are not the center of it. Every strategy where you are not the center. God expose it please by your grace, by your mercy. So that tomorrow we can build accurately. That tomorrow through the blood of Christ is a new opportunity. Thank you that we can boast, that we can brag about the cross of Christ. Your perfect, perfect work shown forth on the cross. When you said it is finished. Thank you that we are protected by your perfect awesome work. And we will find our works in you, in the perfect work that you have done. In Jesus' name, so we pray. Amen, amen, amen.